John had a, mm. a, a vision and an encounter that is really significant that I want him to share with us. And then I've got a word that goes kind of goes along with it. It's always like God speaks to us about the same thing. Amen. So, would you like to start us? Okay. Yes, absolutely. Father, we thank you for this time together. And we pray for your anointing and your presence to be upon everything that we discuss, everything we say. We bring you all the glory and honor. And we thank you for these revelations. And we just love you. And we worship you with everything we do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So I was praying for everything going on in Israel. And I just felt the Spirit of the Lord say to me, joy is coming. And it hit me. And I thought, well, I'm praying for a war. <laughs> so what does this mean? Joy is coming. And then I saw in an instant. I saw, I'm going to read it to you because I don't want to leave anything out. But I saw the White House and I saw that it had turned black. And it was completely black from top to bottom, left to right. But the outline of it was the White House and I knew it for sure. And then all of a sudden, the color of the White House began to turn white again. And it took over all the black. And before long, the entire house was white. And as soon as the white made it to the ground and all the black had disappeared, the Lord says, I'm turning my house white again. There's a time coming. Don't know this. It's not too far off. Where all will seem lost. But know this, says the Spirit of the Lord. I am returning righteousness to the house you call white. I am returning the color back to white. Oh, you must stand oh. and pray. You must call on me to move. Joy is coming. Yes. Hallelujah. And I knew, I knew in that moment, through the Spirit, I knew that everything that's going on in the world is because of that house yes. turning black. If that house was still white like it was at one time, None of this would be going on in the country because America is the heartbeat of the world. Yeah. And when the heart is evil, the rest of the body is evil as well. So because that White House is black, this is what's happening. It's just spreading throughout. But that house is turning white again. And that's our encouragement that it's all going to seem like things are lost, but it's not going to last long. It isn't going to last long. And God's returning righteousness back, he says, to the house that we call white. Yeah. Amen. And, and that reminds me. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good word. Good word. Encouraging word. Uh, it reminds me uh, a few months ago, the Lord spoke to me and told me a shaking is coming to your land uh, and uh, that it will not last long. And it will not harm you that we're to stay in an attitude of faith and praise and thanksgiving when the shaking comes. Uh, but that there is a shaking coming. Yeah. And I kind of feel that we're entering into that time of shaking with this war in mm -hmm. Israel uh, that's going on. I just want to reiterate what the Lord had spoken to me about the war in Israel. And he said that. Tuesday morning, he spoke this word to me. The war in Israel will be short-lived. Much damage on both sides and much heartbreak. The cost will be high. Israel will react like an iron fist slamming down with great force. And when he said that, I saw a literal iron fist come down. It wasn't made of flesh. It was iron. And he said, this will Put a sudden stop to the carnage and it will be my doing. When Israel oh. responds like this, hard, fast, does something, you know, to st put mm. a stop to this, God's behind it. Though we're hearing so many people say Israel shouldn't do this and Israel shouldn't do that, that's not what God's saying. God's saying when Israel responds, with sudden force to stop this, right? that it's my doing, that I am initiating it. We know that uh, 
I remember when after September 11th and they loosed uh, an offensive against Iraq, mm -hmm. that God spoke and said he wasn't in that, that that was not his plan. It wasn't him. But God is saying of this situation now, it is his doing. Wow. All right. He is motivating this. That's why I felt tonight when we prayed, we prayed for Netanyahu, mm -hmm. that he has the mind of God, the heart right. of God, right. and that he does what God shows him to do, mm. that he stays healthy and strong. Continue to pray for him, okay? Because he's in a tough spot. Yeah. And then he said, the wicked will run scrambling for cover to no avail. Mm -hmm. No matter how the wicked who have done this and are, are part of this terrible terrorist attack, they will not be able to hide. Right. Even under the cover of darkness, they will be found and held accountable. Then the next day, when I was alone in prayer, I saw the chariot of fire. Oh, oh that's only happened one other time that I saw the chariot of fire when I was in worship here in the church on a Sunday morning. And, and the father came through in the chariot of fire to pick up the worship of his people. And I saw him. He said to me, he came into my prayer room in the spirit. He said, come on, come with me. I want to show you something. So I got in the chariot of fire with him and off we rode. And he began collecting the prayers of the people. He was collecting the good deeds people were doing, the prophetic declarations, the, the scripture verses people were de declaring and meditating on. Everything good. He was just gathering it. And, and he was showing me that there was an urgency. He couldn't wait for those prayers to just ascend to heaven and fill the bowls. You know how the scripture says that our prayers, the prayers of the saints, fill the bowls in right. heaven, and then when they're full, the bowls are tipped over, and the prayers are answered. Well, God was like, there's an urgency about this. I'm going to get these prayers now. I'm not going to wait for them to come to heaven. All right? So then, today, he showed me that the reason that he was had such an urgency about it was right after the war broke out, there was a lot of prayer going up. But a few days have passed, and he said the prayer have diminished. There's not as much prayer going forth as there was when it first happened. That's why he took off and was collecting that. So I, I knew by his saying that he wants right. us to continue to pray, not to okay. let down that guard, okay, not mm -hmm. to let down the call in our lives to pray for Israel, all right? And that this was the thing he said. He said, Immediately, I am gathering my children's cries in this hour for peace and for Israel to be restored. So he was doing it immediately because he wants to get this thing to end quickly. This, yeah. this God's plan is for this to end quickly. All right. And if it's going to take is, which is that's what it is going to take Israel right. coming after the terrorists, then that's what it's going to take. Right. And then just, I'm going to just share this one last word. He said, the enemy is always trying to destroy Israel, my chosen people, but he will not succeed. And I, when he said that, I thought of all the times through history that we've seen Israel be attacked in, in our lifetime during the Holocaust. That, and now we're seeing this terrible anti-Semitic movement right. going on. So it's just the enemy hates Israel. And he will influence people that he has their ear, their mind, their heart, whatever, their will and their emotions. And he will influence them to attack Israel because he hates Israel. Because it's through Israel, salvation coming to the world, the Messiah coming for which we know right. Jesus was born through Mary, Joseph and the Holy Spirit and given to the world. So he said, far greater is the God who is for Israel than the wicked one who is against them. I will conquer those who rise against my people, my way, and in my timing. So we yeah. can't dictate that God's going to do it a certain way. And we're seeing, you know, different news media outlets and different politicians and whatnot, people saying Israel shouldn't do this and they shouldn't do that. And God's saying, I'm going to do this my way. Mm. 
And if God wants to put the fear of God on the terrorists, <laughs> then so go for it. Go for it. Uh, these terrorists that beheaded little babies, shot children, killed. The ter- I mean, I'm not even going to go through all the things they did. Awful, horrible things happened. And we've got to just let God be God and let God respond the way God wants to respond and pray that Israel listens to Netanyahu and this new board that he's put in place, right. that they do what they need to do. Right. Uh, and, and listening to, to the guidance of the Holy Spirit and are led mm-hmm. by God and what they do. And that the carnage stop. And that's what God was saying to me. He's going to do this. So the carnage stops. Mm-hmm. He wants to put a stop to all this death and this destruction on both sides. Right. That this has got to stop. Right. Yeah. You got something you want to share? No, you can finish off. Okay. And then I have this other word, okay? <laughs> that you can chirp in on, right? Go right ahead. I'm going to eat this orange. <laughs> or is this a, is this a prop? It's a prop. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, and, and now getting back to John's word about the White House, uh, God's been speaking to me about changes. The changes are going to be coming forth. And back a few years ago, he brought me in the spirit on a ride on a butterfly over the west coast of the United States, this beautiful butterfly. And did it have a saddle? No, it didn't have oh. a saddle. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was comfortable. Oh. <laughs> I hung on for dear life. And, <laughs> and the reason he said, the reason I brought you on a butterfly is because the change that's going to be coming to the world is going to be as dramatic as the change that happens when a caterpillar is transformed into a butterfly. Wow. All right. Wow. Yeah. That it's going to be, you know, a little caterpillar, a little scrawny little caterpillar is nothing beautiful to look at. And it's changed into this magnificent butterfly. And God said, that's mm. how dramatic the change is going to be that comes Amen. about. All right? right. And that's was to me. Yeah, same thing. That's right. And that's what our prayers are doing. You guys have been coming here for months and months and months and years, and you've been praying that White House white again. <laughs> but I'm telling you that the time is now. So we can't let up on our prayers. We can't let up on just, you know, declaring the righteousness back into this nation because the world depends on it. Once our nation becomes righteous again and gets given over to the Lord Jesus again, the rest of the world is going to benefit from that. Amen. Uh, So then he started talking to me Monday morning about changes. And he said, some changes have been very beneficial, while others have brought great harm. So we've seen changes happen. In our world, in the last couple of years, there's been some changes that have taken place that were not beneficial. Mm. Okay? Uh, We've lost a lot of our freedoms, a lot of mandates. There's a a lot of changes took place throughout the world. And and God says some changes have been beneficial and some have not. And he said, who initiates change determines if it will bring forth good or evil. Whoever initiates it, whoever starts the change, determines whether it's going to be a good thing or an evil thing. Mm. An evil entity can do no good. Whatever Satan initiates will always bring harm and catastrophic loss. Whatever changes I initiate will bring great blessings, joy, peace, and prosperity. And that's what I feel through what John saw was a change God is initiating. That's right. All right. That's right. And what did you see that this is going to bring forth, this change of the black, the White House changing from black? Who put, who made the White House black? The enemy. Right. The enemy influencing people with, to rule wickedly, you know, wicked things going on in the White House. Turned it black. The enemy brought about that change. God's saying... Revival is coming. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Because joy is coming. Amen. And when joy is here, revival's here. Restoration is here. Healing 
is here. Creative miracles are here. Deliverance is here. Because joy is the major topic and all those other things fall underneath it. So whatever you can think of that is good, that relates to joy, that is what's coming. And he's allowed us to have tastes of that. Little bits of that. We've we've experienced that. We've felt it. All these things that are happening, we hear reports all over the place. That's going to be the commonplace. So instead of just one or two testimonies and, you know, everyone's, wow, that's amazing. Everyone's going to have a testimony because it's going to be commonplace. It's like when the interest rates are low, there's no one that gets surprised that you received a low interest rate on your mortgage. Because everyone gets the low interest rate on their mortgage. When interest rates are high and you say, I had sixes or seven percent or eight percent on my mortgage, no one's surprised by that because they're all getting the same number. It's the same thing. It's not just going to be here and there or whatever. It's going to go from the center out. And God put that White House there as the center because all nations look to that. We even all look to that. We do. We look to that to see the leadership and what's happening and what we have to pray for. What is the pulse like in our nation? We look to that. And once that goes from that black, disgusting color that it is now, with all the little demons that are living inside all those offices inside that place, once they get booted out and rooted out, <laughs> come on, yeah. booted and rooted, <laughs> white is returning to our house. And then the whole nation has victory. Once that house is made right, everything else is made right. It spins off of it. Amen. Amen. Now getting back to the word that God said, he said, when I rule, I can bring forth the changes that are needed for my will to be done and for my children to live blessed. So when God rules over our lives, huh? he can bring right. forth the changes he wants to bring forth. When we commit our lives to him, he's free mm. to bless us and to bring forth those blessings. But if he rules over regions, over nations, or over the world, he can do the same thing. Right. right? He said, I will rule once again. I am bringing forth a season of change. My children want me to rule. I want those who are very wicked to be taken out of their seats of authority. Amen. Do we want that? Does the world want that? Yes. We're sick of it. Deep groans are going forth from those who have been oppressed and dominated by evil leaders. He's saying, God's saying, I'm hearing deep groanings mm -hmm. from people. That have been oppressed by wicked leaders. Mm -hmm. People are groaning. I, I was listening to somebody on on YouTube was saying that they were given an opportunity for a wonderful job with a huge pay increase. That he said my children would never lack for anything. That he it was going to bless his entire family. It was a huge increase. And then at the last minute, as he was just going to accept the job, he was told only this one qualification. You have to get the vaccine and all the boosters in order to work here. And so he said, I can't do it. I can't do it. And so just such disappointment that he lost such a blessing. All right. That people are groaning. You know, he saw this wonderful opportunity. But it, he, what was his choice? Okay. And so he chose not to have the vaccine. And so he didn't get the job. God's many people are groaning under the weight of the oppression of leaders that have been taking our freedoms from us and oppressing us in many, many ways. Mm -hmm. And our health wise is one, but also finances. There's heavy burdens of taxation are uh, uh, the cost of everything is skyrocketed and our income hasn't right. so that people are being really in a tough place groaning mm -hmm. under the weight of this oppression. Mm -hmm. God says, I'm hearing this. Mm -hmm. All right. He said, the masses are ready for change. Mm -hmm. 
This is what God is saying. The masses are ready for change. Okay? They no longer want the wicked to rule over them in their lands. All right, we pray tonight for Brazil. Do the people in Brazil want change? Do the people right. huh, in parts of India want change? Oh, yes. They long for goodness that only comes from a good God and a kind king. People are longing for good rulers, hmm. kind rulers. Okay? They will let me rule and not rebel for my ways as they did in the past. And, and the Lord had shown me um, the couple of days previously that a king only can rule if the people allow him to rule. Right. If, a, right. if a person's in leadership and nobody will listen to them and they won't do what they say, well, the king has no authority. And the king really is just in name only and eventually will lose that place because the people will put someone else mm-hmm. in rulership. And what God showed me was that as king of the world, he created the world. This was his world. He was king. He's God. But people refuse to see him as king and listen to him and obey him and follow him. And over the last how many years, especially last 75 years or so, we've seen that especially happen with the laws that we passed. Uh, Legalizing abortion, huh? Mm-hmm. Taking prayer out of school, prayer mm-hmm. taken out of different gatherings, sports right. gatherings, political right. things. In so many ways, little by little by little, we have kicked God off the throne. Mm. It says, I'm not listening to you. You're not my king. And so he says, I can't rule where people won't obey me. He said, now things have changed where people are sick mm. right. of the rulers that they have put in place. They're sick of the oppression that they've been under. Mm. They're ready for mm. a change. They're ready to let me get back into my seat to govern once again. Amen. Can we say that, that in our own lives? Have we changed over the past few mm. years? Yes. Are we ready? Yes. And eager to have Amen. God rule over our lives and over the world, over our nation. Because we know God is good. Amen. Jump in if you have anything. Okay. John, if you got anything, go ahead. You can oh. interrupt. <laughs> no, you're good. You go. You go. All right. <laughs> I don't want to get in trouble. I want to have dessert when we get home. <laughs> I don't want to be sent to my room with no dessert. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Okay, then I'm just going to finish with what he said here. Reaping the consequences of their rebellion has taught them a lesson they won't easily forget. Mm. Have we learned a lesson through the years of all of our rebellion? I'm going to do it my way. Uh, What about the song, My Way? (laughs) That was the story of our lives. We weren't going to have anybody tell us what to do. We're going to do things our way, what made us happy. What satisfied mm. our flesh. True. Right. Okay. And God's saying, reaping the consequences of their rebellion has taught them a lesson they won't easily forget. Mm. To follow me and my way brings peace, joy, love, mm. and prosperity. Just what you said. Joy is coming. To follow the ways of the wicked brings sorrow, suffering, lack, and loss. Mm. And that's what we have seen happen because we kicked God off the throne right. and we let Satan get on the throne. We can kid ourselves that, well, it was just, you know, just a little bit of evil. No, we, we really right. let Satan come in and start ruling over the world and he's heat destruction on the world. And then he said, by the outpouring of my spirit, this transformation will come about. Man cannot bring forth this dramatic change, but I can and I will. Yes, I will pour forth my spirit on all flesh and lives will be changed, hearts melted and made mine. 
So God's saying this change is coming about that you saw in this visitation with the White House changing from black to white. Mm -hmm. And it's going to come about by an outpouring of the Spirit. We need right. the Holy Spirit for our efforts. Right. It's going to come about by a move of God, by the Holy Spirit being poured out. How did we change? Mm. Did we change because we just tried so hard and we made ourselves be really good? <laughs> How can you try for a long time and nothing good happened? Huh? All of us. <laughs> then God visited us. We got filled with the Holy Spirit. We surrendered our lives to him and said, oh, take my life. <laughs> I belong to you, God. And we started changing. Huh? How many got nicer as you surrendered your lives? <laughs> A little more loving, huh? A little more patient, kinder, huh? More willing to sacrifice for others. Yeah. It's the Holy Spirit that makes us holy. Amen. <laughs> I'm, I'm enjoying this. Keep going. <laughs> Years ago, the Lord told me, he said, you have my holiness in you. I'm like, I do? I, I was really saved, you know, and I was, I had not done a good job getting the kids off to school. <laughs> I was I'm down on myself. And, he, and he's trying to encourage me. He's like, you have my holiness in you. I'm like, I got your holiness? You know, God is holy. I mean, God, there is not a speck of a thing wrong with God. He's perfect. And he said, you got my holiness in you. And um, he said, my Holy Spirit is my holiness. And I have mm. given you my holiness. And the job of the Holy Spirit is to make us holy. Mm. Oh! <laughs> yeah. He says, as I pour my spirit out all over the world, I'm mm. going to make the world holy. Oh! What does it mean to be holy? To be set apart right. from God. That right. we belong. Yeah. 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 So, so this... This is what, what we're coming to. Mm -hmm. This is the, a big change is coming. God's saying, don't be discouraged by what you're hearing, what you're seeing. This shaking, he warned us this month ago yeah. that a shaking was coming and it would be short-lived. Don't be discouraged. We're in the midst of this right now. Hang on with faith. What's God saying? He's saying, I'm going to pour my spirit out. I, I think this is a phenomenal word that you had, this visitation, this vision mm -hmm. of the White House being changed yeah. from black to white. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's yeah. Good. No, absolutely. Yeah, because this is this is what we needed. You know, we've been dealing with a lot the past few years and we've been wondering, God, where are you? Oh, you know, oh. a lot of people have said, um, Trump's gonna get right back in or Trump's still in charge as the president and you know, Biden really isn't. And the longer we went, the more we realized, yeah, that's not true. That's not happening. And our hope wanted him back in. But see, our hope needs to surpass flesh and blood. Yeah. Yeah. Because if we hope on flesh and blood, then we're going to be let down every time. And is, is it all that we want is a four year fix? Oh, no. <laughs> so I'm not saying that it wouldn't be great to have him back in, but we want this nation changed forever. Amen. 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 Yeah. So I don't really care what it looks like. I don't care if it's him. I don't care if it's Vivek. I don't care if it's this. I'm just saying I don't care because my faith isn't in me. I want this nation changed forever. And God, however you do that, I'm in. Yeah. I'm in. Whoever your David is, I'm in. So he could still be his David unless he chooses not to. He could say, no, I'm going the other way. Well, I'm not going to be a blind man following another blind man off a ditch. 
So as long as he still shows the character of David, I'm all in. But if he changes and he changes his character and he's no longer like David, I'm not following a blind man off a cliff. So I'm telling you this because we don't follow a man. Yeah. We follow the man. Amen. And all Trump has done, God has used this man just like he uses you, just like he uses me, just like he uses any of us. God has used this man to breathe life back into people again. Yeah. We have been almost flatlined without any life in our bodies. All of a sudden, God used this man and all of his coarseness and his rudeness and his <laughs> get him out of here. Go back to mommy. Go back to mommy in the basement. And we all loved it because I said, who talks like that? Yes. And we love, I, I watched the rallies just to tap him here and say, go back to mommy. Bye. Get him out. Because I thought, who does that? <laughs> and what happened was we went from being in this position to the edges of our seats. What's he going to say next? <laughs> what is this guy going to tweet next? <laughs> it breathed a little hope because he was speaking the things that we were thinking, but we didn't have microphones to set. <laughs> and he would say it. And God used him for that. I pray that he still allows God to use him. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. next four. Yeah. But we don't need a four-year fix. We don't need that White House to go from shades every four years, white to black, black to white. It's staying white. Amen. It's staying white. Yeah. Amen. Because that's how God ordained it. That's how he designed it. Oh. And the devil came in and repainted it. <laughs> and he has gotten fired. And he is no longer in the painting business. <laughs> and the Lord's going to turn that house white again. And it's from the, the radiance of his glory that makes that house white. Yes. yes. It's because God's glory is going to be on our nation once again. And that's what's going to change our schools and our uh, all of our colleges and our workplaces and all of this transgender. That's what's going to change America. That whatever comes out of the soil is good. <laughs> Whatever's in the water is healthy. Yeah, again. That's what's coming back to our nation. That desire. Where did that desire come from to leave your life of sin? I don't know. It just it just rose up within me it, because it's all over the nation. It comes from beneath the earth. It comes from above the ground. It comes from everywhere, that desire to be righteous. That's where it comes. It can't come from you and I. We're evil people. Yeah. yeah. We're sinners. Yeah. It comes from him. And it's his glory that is going to shine upon this nation again. And then all of the nations are going to want what we have. And that is an easy thing to do because all we have to do is say, I'm going to introduce you to him. I'm going to bring him to you. And that same glory that we have here, you can have over you there. Are you excited? Yeah. Okay, yes. <laughs> oh, the anointing on me now strong. <laughs> You want an orange? <laughs> no thanks. <laughs> what we're gonna do now? We're gonna worship. Oh, we're gonna worship God because that's what brings His glory. Yeah. That's what brings the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Right. As we worship Him, it draws Him. I I'm just gonna close with this and remind you of that. I saw what I saw in the Spirit a few weeks ago when a uh, Father brought me high above the earth, mm. and I looked down. And I saw the world total darkness. It was in complete darkness. And then as I looked at the world and in the, I was close to the Father, I could feel the heart of the Father. And the heart of the Father was broken because he could hear what people were mm -hmm. saying. He knew what they were thinking, knew everything people were doing. And it was so much evil. And his heart was broken by what he was seeing and hearing. And, and so he was letting me feel a little bit of what he was feeling. And then I started seeing lights start shining here and there on the world, little tiny white lights. And they started to multiply. 
and the lights were drawing him, his attention. Father's attention was off the darkness yeah. and was on the lights. Mm. And as these lights grew and got stronger, he, he was drawn from heaven to the earth. And then the whole world just had this fire, glowing mm. fire, just all over it. The glory of God lit up the whole world. Mm was no longer in darkness. It was full of light. Mm -hmm. And so what drew him? I could feel. I could feel the love uh, from the remnant, the people that these lights represented. I could feel that love drawing him from heaven to the earth. That's why worship is so, so important right now in this mm -hmm. hour. The Lord told yeah. me, spend a little more time in worship on Friday nights because that's what's going to bring the victory. Okay. Mm -hmm. And why is it going to bring the victory? Because it's going to bring his glory, his presence, mm -hmm. not just here in this meeting, mm -hmm. but as we're worshiping, we're standing in the gap for the whole world. We're standing in the gap for our loved ones, for the nation and for the world. We're singing mm -hmm. on behalf of the world. God, it says in Jeremiah, I looked for the land for someone who would stand in the gap for the land. I looked all throughout the land and I couldn't find anyone. Right. That's not what's going on now. God's mm. looking throughout the land and he has found a people mm. who love him with all their Amen. heart, mind, soul, and strength and love their neighbors as their self. And mm. because he has that people that love him, he is going to pour his spirit out mm. oh, on all flesh. We, Our worship isn't just for us here. This is what he wants us to know. It's affecting the whole world. Amen. Okay? Your worship is affecting the whole world. That's what I saw. It was the worship of those few pulled his presence from heaven to the earth and the whole world went on fire Amen. for God. All right? So that's yeah. why when you're worshiping, know this every week. Know it. That you are standing in the gap for the world. That you're not just worshiping for yourself and your loved ones. You're worshiping mm -hmm. on behalf of the world. Mm -hmm. When you're saying, God, you're my God. You're my everything. It's you I worship. It's you I adore. You're saying it on behalf of the whole world. And so when God looks down, he's hearing the whole world through your mouth saying, you're my God. You're my friend. I love you. I'm going to serve you forever. Mm -hmm. That's why worship is so huge. Okay. We, we did warfare. We bound demons. We declared the word of God. We prayed. We proclaimed the word of God. That's part of the, the warfare and the battle. Now we're going to enter into another part of the battle, which is worship. Worship warfare. Let's all stand. Oh.